state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. are constantly vigilant, always on the alert for the predictable type of crime. But unfortunately, all criminal acts are not predictable, and often the most commonplace incidents, things you may see every day in the street, can have the most unusual significance. These people, disguised as guards for the superior armored car service and using a duplicate truck, move quickly and efficiently in stealing $29,000. Such was the case in a routine weekly armored truck money pickup at a large supermarket. A few minutes later, the usual proved to be very unusual indeed, when the legitimate, the real armored truck appeared at the market for its regular pickup. Within moments, it was discovered that a robbery had taken place, and in the smoothest manner possible. The highway patrol was immediately notified. Okay, Mr. Gregory, that's enough information to start with. We'll be in touch. Did you get that in the extension? Yes, an armored car just don't disappear into thin air. This one did, for the time being, anyway. Send somebody down to the Shermart Market. Have them pick up the manager, Mr. Gregory. Bring him back here. Also, a list of all his employees, past and present. Will do. Get a complete check on the Superior Armored Car Service. See if any of their trucks are unaccounted for this afternoon. Do the same with all companies that use armored trucks. Could have been driven in from another city. Yeah, you might be right. You better run it down. Then find out about all recent orders for sheet metal to garages and auto repair shops. Get a complete list of all the employees, past and presently employed by the Superior Armored Car Service. Check all places that build cars to order. Put every available man on this. Got it. All right, let's get it rolling. My shop closed and locked for two weeks while I phoned this panel up to look like the real armored truck. Okay, so you're the mechanic. Get going. All right, I was just thinking... Thinking about making the split now, huh? Well, I don't see anything so terrible about it. I must have told you a hundred times when most guys run into trouble. They make a plan and then don't stick with it. The cops can't get you unless you got a record. In our case, they haven't got any because we never pulled a job before. We planned not to touch this money for six months, didn't we? Sure, but... And that's the way it's gonna be with you at this auto shop of yours for the next six months. Business as usual. Understood. Come on, Kay, let's get started. Now, Walt, remember, burn those uniforms. Strip the phony windows and stuff off this truck and paint it as fast as you can. It'll all be taken care of. Walt, don't come around the stand. Let's go, baby. Everything seemed perfectly normal, Mr. Matthews. I had no idea it was a robbery. Not until the real armored car showed up at the store a few minutes later. How long have you been manager of the store? Since it opened? Last year. But I've been with the chain seven years, sir. And they got, let me see here, 29,000. Yes, sir. When they came in, did they show you the proper identification? Well, to be honest, they showed it, but I didn't really check it. I didn't question them. There's been other guards in the past. I saw the car pull up outside. 
I have no reason to be suspicious. The money is picked up each week at approximately the same time. As I said, everything yeah, seems... Yeah, I know. It looked perfectly normal. Is this a list of your employees, past and present? Yes, it is. Sergeant, check this with criminal records. Get me the answer as soon as you can. Art, please put it away. What's the matter with you? I just feel better if you put it away. 29,000 lovely American beauties. 29,000. And they'll be even lovelier to spend. I just think in six months we'll be living like... Please? Okay. Okay. Better? Only we didn't have to keep it here. Okay, so I'll deposit it in a bank. It's not every week we get a windfall like this, baby. I know, Art. But I've got a feeling things will never be the same again. You bet they won't. We'll never have to scrounge around to make ends meet. You won't be wearing last year's dresses. We'll be somebody, you and me. A lady and a gentleman, not hash slingers. People will be waiting on us instead of our waiting on them. You said you wanted that, didn't you? Well, didn't you? Yes, Art. That's what I wanted. Only now... Only now you're excited like I said, that's all. It'll be okay. Come on, let's open up, hmm? Okay, Kay. That's a perfect spot. We shouldn't be here right across the street. It's too close. We can keep up with what's going on here. They'll never suspect us right across the street. Unless all of a sudden we should pull out. Mr. Matthews, the reports are completed. Bring them in. Criminal records check on his employees was negative. And the other reports? All superior trucks and those of other companies operating in this area were accounted for, but there is something. What? This is a report on recent orders of sheet metal. This one here is particularly interesting. Oh, Burns Auto Shop, 1863 owned place, operated by Walter E. Burns. Ordered place seven weeks ago. And this is a report on specialists in custom built cars. This name here underlined Burns Auto Shop. Report on mechanics past and presently employed by the Superior Armored Car Service. It pops up there again. Walter E. Burns, chief mechanic from 48 to 53. Rated one of the best. Well, that makes three out of three. Looks like they might have built their own. Could be, but that's doing it the hard way. Let's see what happens with Burns when we ask him a few questions. He's not around the truck. Here, yeah, this. Sheet metal and glass. That's the truck they used, all right. They did a good job, too. Check around here. See if you can find his home address. Then send a patrol car out there right away. I'll wait here.
you are, sir. I guarantee it'll melt in your mouth. All right. I've got to talk to you. Keep your voice down. Fool, I told you not to come around here, didn't I? It was only 24 hours. The police were at my garage. It's impossible. You're just jumpy. Sure, I'm jumpy, but they were there, I tell you. The highway patrol. What did they ask you? I got out before they had a chance to ask me anything. You crazy. It was probably just routine. I wasn't taking any chances. The phony windows are still on the panel. You were supposed to strip it and paint it. I haven't had time. All right, I'm getting out of town. I was even afraid to go back to my apartment for a change. I need money for traveling. For clothes. And I want my share now. I don't have it here. Just listen to me, Art. I want it. I need it. All right. No. Then when? Tonight, nine o'clock. All right. I'll be back then. Not here. I'll meet you up at the River Road, nine o'clock. We'll settle everything then. failed to return to his garage or his home, an APB pickup order was radioed to all local points. The bulletin was repeated at regular intervals. When the APB failed to bring results, a tri-state alarm was teletyped. The hours passed. All reports coming into headquarters were negative. But you never get here. It's just nine. Such a perfect plan. Hey, Walt, I wonder how the cops ever got to your place. How do I know? Did you bring the money? I, I gotta go. That's what we're here for, Walt. A final settlement. The money's in the car, huh? No, Walt. Come on, quit kidding! Who's kidding? Now look, guard! <laughs> You killed him. You didn't say you were going to do a thing like that. Had to be done, Kay. No. No! If the police would have caught up with him, he'd have talked. Where would we be? Killy! No! It's the only practical way, baby. The search for Walter Burns continued, but no results were forthcoming. There was not one trace, not one positive indication of where the wanted man might have gone. Mr. Matthews. What? Where? I'll be right out. They found Burns on the River Road, murdered. What did the medical examiner say? 
Death was instantaneous. Happened by 9.15 p.m. You got the report at 9.30? That's right. By a local farmer. He was passing by, saw the parked car, and investigated. Did you see any other cars on the road? No, but there's another car here. It was parked just over there. Any sign of the money? No, but Burns, by the way, didn't have a cent in his pocket. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? A $29,000 robbery, not a cent in his pocket. He gets paid off by being murdered. The earth around here is soft and muddy. We got good impressions of the other car's tires. I think there were seven, ten, fifteens. We also got good impressions of the shoe print. After the lab boys make prints, send them in for analysis. Right. Maybe they'll walk the killer right into our hands. going to do with that briefcase? Tell me. What are you going to do with it? Tell me! I wanted to burn it. You what? Destroy it! I thought it might change things. Undo what's been done. Bring us back to where we were before all this started. We were happy then. I'm happy now. Not happy. Different. A murderer. This is the way things are going to stay. And don't you ever get such thoughts again. Kay! Don't try anything foolish. You understand? Well, here they are, sir. All set and analyzed. All right, what's the rundown? Shoe size, 8D. That makes him out of man of medium height, huh? Well, we put his height at 5 foot 8, give or take an inch. Is he heavy? No, sir, not over 140. All right, go on. They were inexpensive shoes. I'd say about a year old. Outside leather is showing the grain, and perforation marks are spread wide. And notice this. The sole seems to be pretty thin right there. Either sloppy in appearance, or can't afford to keep his shoes in shape. Judging from the low quality, I'd pick the latter. Well, I'm surprised that you lab boys can't come up with a name and the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> we could if you'd written it on his heel. Okay, I'm stopped. We're not. Now look at this, Mr. Matthews. Let me see. Uh, heel's worn down on the inside. Well, notice the arches on both shoes. Frankly, I don't see anything special. Well, we did. These prints were made by a pair of shoes with specially built-in arches. Cheap ones, but specially built in, just the same. We couldn't ask much more from one set of prints, could we? Except the name and the phone number. Check all the shoe stores in the area that sell shoes with specially built in art supports. Get on it right away. Right. Mud. Mud. It's blood, Arthur. And no matter how hard you try, the blood won't come off. Blood? What's the matter with you? Just some mud I stepped in. Walt's blood. Stop that. You're supposed to be out front. You're supposed to act like nothing happened. Business as usual, remember? Business as usual. That's right. For the next six months, everything according to plan. Do you know what they say about the best laid plans? Cut that. Now cut it! This is one plan that's gonna work. Then in six months... Six months. Don't you know time is already up for us? Don't you realize it's already too late? Get out there and take care of the customers. I'm going out. I'll be back in an hour. Uh, number of the railroad station, please. Information booth. Yes, regarding time of trains leaving the city. Thank you. Okay, well, let's keep trying and keep in touch.
Come in. The report on Burns Friends is completed. Anything at all? No. Anything from the shoe tracer detail? Willis has come up empty, too. What about the other sections of the detail? Same so far. Matthews. Yes, Kofax. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I got that. Where does he live? No, I'll take care of this myself, thanks. Kovacs just called from a shoe store on 2nd Street. They've got a customer who comes in every year and buys shoes, especially built in art supports. Cheap brand, too. Description fits him to a T. His name's Denson. That's a break. Oh, there's more. He and his wife run a hamburger stand on Venter Avenue. They live in an apartment directly in back of it, right across from the market that was robbed. That's cool. something like this. That's why I said I was going out. To test you. All right. Where were you going? I didn't know. I, I just had to get away. With the money? No, Art. All that acting crazy. Just so you could pull a stunt like this. I didn't want the money, believe me. It's still in the briefcase in the cabinet. We'll see for yourself. It's still there. Come out, Denson. All exits are covered. Do what he says, Art. It's best this way. Do what he says, huh? You think I went through all this for nothing? The money's no good to you now. Please, Art, listen to me just this once. Come out, Denson, with your hands above your head. Come on out, Denson, or we'll come in after you. Art, it's your only chance. All right. All right. I'm coming out. Me, you get her first. Shoot, it doesn't make any difference. Shoot! They won't. Cops don't kill ladies. Drop your guns, gentlemen. Get up those steps, quick. Get up there! Go on. She's all right. I'll call the ambulance. All the time, it was just across the street.
Paul's story next week is a very unusual one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Radrick Crawford saying see you next week. to get to Huntington. Huntington? Now, your best bet is stay on this dirt road till you get to 19 and turn north. You'll see the road markers. Well, I'd appreciate a road map if you have one. Now, we only got some wildflower maps. Wildflower maps? Well, I guess you're a tourist. Yeah, they show places on the desert you can see wildflowers, but they don't show Huntington. Won't do you much good. Oh. Well, let me have one anyway. After I pick the wife up at Huntington, we might drive back over the desert next week on our way home. Oh, sure. Yeah, there's something to see, so they tell me. Personally, I wouldn't know a wildflower if it bit me. <laughs> you and me both. But the wife will get a big kick out of the trip. Three dollars each. And there's your map. Hope you and your wife enjoy the trip. I'm sure we will. Thank you very much. The Highway Patrol has released the following description of Stan Warren, wanted for questioning in the murder of Virginia Dorn. Warren is 5 feet 11 and weighs about 160 pounds. He's described as being habitually well-dressed and well-groomed. He's probably armed and dangerous. The suspect may be driving a two-tone convertible, license number 2S68040. If you have reason to believe you've seen this man, contact your local police, sheriff's office, or highway patrol. On the national scene, the department... Operator! Operator, give me the highway patrol. attendant advises that the suspect headed east toward Highway 19. 10-4. Put out an emergency APB. Alert all units at Huntington, Red Rock, and Bitter Creek. 10-4. You know, that description fits more in the car, such as it. Yeah, but according to the report, the attendant said that the man wasn't in any hurry. 
What's all this chit-chat about wildflower maps and his wife in Huntington? Warren isn't married. No, no, he hasn't had time. But he's gonna lie. He's smooth and sharp. He's gotta be to be a con man. Con man turned murderer. All right, he won't move too fast. That'll create suspicion. Look, if he says he's going to Huntington, that's the last place he's gonna go. With radio stations cooperating with the highway patrol, the fugitive inevitably learned that his description and that of his car was being broadcast throughout the state. He knew that his escape, even from this relatively unpatrolled area, depended upon a quick and unexpected change in tactics. on the desert before. Oh, this area used to be an inland sea, hundreds of millions of years ago. Mm. Now, we're looking for fossils. Fossils? Oh, you, you mean them big monsters, uh, like in the movies, huh? Well, you're probably thinking of dinosaurs. The fish fossils that we're looking for came much earlier, during the Devonian period. Oh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Number two and four is all we got. The special's all gone. Well, I'll take um, number four. You fellow scientists? Not exactly. We teach at a university. You do? Guess you're uh, on an expedition, huh? Oh, I'd hardly call it that. Some people go deer hunting on weekends. My friend and I decided to come out here to the desert and dig for fossils. Sort of a postman's holiday. Oh, how do you, uh, how do you know where to dig? Mostly guesswork. But we heard of a place a few miles off the highway that sounds promising. What do you do for a living, Mr. Uh... Uh, Martin, Sam Martin. I'm just a short order cook. On my way to a job in Morrisburg. Not due till Wednesday. Oh, well, this is Professor Lamont. And my name's Gordon Ryan. Mr. Ryan is an instructor at the same university I'm with. He'll be a professor next year. Hey, that's swell. You uh, said you're going out in the desert for a weekend. I was just thinking, I could cook for you. Help lug your gear. Maybe drive for you? Uh, I admit that neither Ryan or I look forward to my cooking, Mr. Martin, but it doesn't sound like very much fun for you. <laughs> sure will be. Gosh, I, I've never seen real scientists before. All right, Mr. Martin, go ahead and finish your lunch, and uh, you can join our expedition. As 
thinly scattered patrol units covered the highways, Stan Warren plowed through the desert wasteland, seeking a new route of escape. Say, Professor, you know anything about these roads the other side of the fossil beds? Where do they lead? Uh, some of them lead into the mountains, and uh, several connect with main highways. Across the state line? Yes. That's why Ryan and I came this way. So we wouldn't be confused by that network of roads. Uh-huh. Uh, well, it's been pretty rough going the past couple of miles. It wouldn't hurt for us to take a little break. Hey, that's a good idea. Uh. Hey, gentlemen. Now get this. This is loaded, and I'm not kidding. Do what you're told, and nobody will get hurt. Martin, I... Yeah. Tie up your friend. Ryan, lie down on the ground. Go on. Are you out of your mind? I said lie down. All right, Lamont, tie him up. Turn over with your hands behind your back. Go on, Lamont, tie him up. If you don't tie him, I shoot him. Now take your choice. Intensified search in the Empire Valley region brought one result, the discovery of Stan Warren's car. Well, how about this? He changed clothes and probably cars. Either that or he's still looking for one. Probably still in the area. Let's go. 2150 to headquarters. Headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Suspect's car is on the outskirts of three wells, apparently abandoned. Put out an APB to Empire Valley units to examine the occupants of all cars heading east out of the valley. Very good, Professor. You get a PhD in knot tying. Now get in, you're driving. Martin or whoever you are, you can't leave him here. I can't take both of you. And with you with me, Lamont, the cops won't shoot. This is murder to leave him here, just as much as if you shot him. He'll be able to work his way out of those ropes in a couple of hours. Now, let's get going. Come on, let's get this thing moving. headed across the desert, leaving behind him a man bound and helpless. Following the discovery of the abandoned car, a methodical check was made in the small town of Three Wells as the search continued for the murder suspect. Ever seen this man before? No. Never saw him before in my life. Take a good look, will you? Think who's been in here today. He might have been pretty well dressed up. I'd say he's about 5 feet 9, 165 pounds. Wait a minute, uh, that face is familiar now. Uh, about so tall? Yeah, that's right. Then you have seen him. Yeah. His face and hands were dirty. He looked like he'd been working on a car or something. What was he wearing? Work clothes. Uh, brown, sort of. And a jacket. How long ago did he leave? Hmm. About an hour ago. With two fellas. What two fellas? A couple of college guys. Were they students? Gosh, no. Professors, uh, he drove off with them. Did they say where they were going? Out to deserts, all I know. You know, it seemed awful strange to me. Why do you say that? We were going out to look for fish bones. Fish bones in the desert? <laughs> That's the man, all right. I'm sure now. Thanks. Thanks very much. You know, 
If he heads out across the desert with the units we got, we can't possibly cover him. He'll make for the state line, sure. He's got a choice of a dozen roads. Block one on either side of the line, and he'll head for another. Those two men with him were stymied. Yeah. All right, Professor. Which way to the road? About a quarter of a mile that way. You sure? Yes. Now get this and get it straight. The sooner I get to where those roads branch off, the sooner you get turned loose. Then you can save your pile back there. If I wanted him to die, I would have shot him. Save me and you save Ryan. Got it, Professor? He's traveling with two men. At the moment, we feel that he's wearing work clothes. Will you contact helicopter unit 141? Tell them we're at Three Wells. Have them pick us up on the west side of town. Except to Kyle. Not the one we're after. Helicopter 141 to headquarters. Headquarters to helicopter. Go ahead. Request information on units patrolling state line checkpoints. Reports negative. I'm two miles north of Highway 40. I'll continue search. 10-4. over this area. I thought I saw something that looked like car tracks. See those tracks here? No. I see something else that's white that's moving. That's a man signal. Turn it down. Stan Warren's plan of escape and of his probable course across the desert. You sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm okay. But that guy's got Steve. He's got to do something. Well, there's three in the copter already. He's not room for anybody else. Suppose you walk to the highway. I'll have a patrol car pick you up. Can you make it? That's fine. Don't worry about me. Just help him on. Okay, thanks. coming out of the desert. Yeah, but which way would he go? East. That's the only way to get him out of the state. That's his best bet. Out of the road east. Looks like them up the road there. Yeah.
That's Warren and Lamont, all right. Miss Ryan's description, exactly. Circle out away from the road, but keep him in sight. If we get too close, Warren will know we're after him. How are we gonna stop him? He's got Lamont. An obstruction that doesn't look like we set it up. That's what we need. That truck, when it's around the curve, it'll be out of Warren's view. Circle all around that hill. Keep out of Warren's sight. We'll stop the truck and use it as a roadblock. Do him like and hide in it. And you take off fast. Get the copter up and away from the road. Oh, I get it. The stall truck will get Warren out. But he's clear of Lamont. We'll nab him. Sounds okay to me. We could hover over him. Maybe you could drop into it. You feel acrobatic? Sure. Okay, you're elected. Good luck. Stay here while I see what the trouble is. If you yell out or make one false move, you get this. And so does anybody else who happens to be around. All right, Warren, put your hands on your head. Come on, get out, run! Swing this thing around. at the Lamont again. If he gets him, we're right back where we started. Pour it on. Thanks, Professor. We found Mr. Ryan. He's okay. Slide in. We'll get out of the truck. You had a rough 
up on it. Time, didn't you? Just a nick. Tell you what I'll do with you. Keep you up the stunt detail for a while, huh? Both of you, take off for Holbrook Hospital. Sir, I'm Matthews, Highway Patrol. Thanks so much for your cooperation. You've been very kind. Glad to have helped. Highway Patrol story is a very unusual one. I hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, it isn't the car that kills, it's the driver. This is Bradley Crawford saying, see you next week. Journey back to the village of Mayberry for Andy Griffith. Day mornings at 11.30, here in the Time Warp on CKBR.